Hey, welcome back. I'm gonna show you how I make my awesome buttermilk biscuits in this video. Super easy. You don't need to know how to make biscuits prior or, or have any experience. I'm gonna show you step by step. And I use these biscuits for my awesome chicken biscuit. Let's get started. Hello, welcome back to Whole Southern Cooks where we cook with as many whole ingredients as possible to make some good Southern food. On this video, I'm showing you how I make biscuits. Biscuits are very easy to make. It's all about following directions and practicing until you have the technique down. It's not complicated at all. Do not believe anyone who tells you that biscuits in the can are equal to homemade biscuits. That is a lie from the devil himself. <laughs> I'm so serious. Canned biscuits, you leave them out for a little bit, they're gonna shrivel up, they get hard as rocks. They don't taste the same. And it's actually cheaper to make your own biscuits. So I'm gonna show you how. And when you make these biscuits, I want you to let me know how delicious they were. The first thing you're going to need is a big bowl to bring everything together. Next, you're gonna need two cups of cold milk. You can use whole milk, 2%, full fat coconut, full fat soy, or buttermilk. I'm using buttermilk and whole milk. Next, you're gonna need your flour and leavening mixture. This has two and a half cups of self-rising flour. If you don't have self-rising flour, that's cool. You can make your own self-rising flour copycat by the ingredients I will include in the description. However, if you do have self-rising flour, you're going to need to add to it a teaspoon of salt, a tablespoon of sugar, and one tablespoon of baking powder. Even though the self-rising flour has leavening properties in it, depending on what you're using the self-rising flour for, you may need to still add additional leavening ingredients, such as your baking powder. You're also going to need a stick of butter. I'm using traditional butter. I'm trying to only use my plant butter on things that absolutely require it because plant butter is very expensive lately. First, go ahead and empty your flour and your leavening and etc. ingredients into your bowl. Next, you're gonna take your butter and I'm going to cut this butter up into very thin pieces. You don't have to worry about grating the butter or any of that. Just cut the butter very thin. This is like a third of a tablespoon of butter, most likely. Once you've cut up all the butter, which takes you no time, dump it in the mixture. The next thing you're going to do is take your hand, whether it's very clean and bare or very clean and gloved, and cover the pieces of butter with flour so the butter does not melt fast. This locks in the temperature of the butter for a limited amount of time. Gives you enough time to work with and make the biscuits. The next thing you're gonna do is take both of your clean hands, whether gloved or ungloved, and pick up the flour as it has the butter in it and simply take it and squish it. You want to do this with every single piece of butter. When you squish it, you'll make a sort of butter shard. Picture how when you break a piece of glass and the glass breaks into all types of fragments, some big, some small, that's what you're doing with the butter. You wanna just do that with every piece of butter. If you pick up flour in your hand, you should see pieces 
of butter, varying in size. The next thing you're gonna do is take your milk and you're going to pour about half of the milk in the bowl. You're gonna take your hands and make sure that all of the flour in the bowl has some milk on it. It will be sticky. The key to having good biscuit dough is to make sure that your dough is wet enough to come together, but not so wet that you can't cut out biscuits. That's it. There's no more to it. A test to see if you have enough milk in your flour for biscuits is to simply pick up a handful and squeeze it together. If it falls apart like that, there's not enough milk. You need to add more. When you add more milk, add it in fourth cup increments because it won't take much more milk at this point. As you add the milk, keep reincorporating it with the flour until you reach that point where you can pick up a handful of dough and it's not gonna easily just fall apart. We are almost there. Now you may be wondering, why am I wearing gloves? I have very sensitive skin and it's easy for me to get contact dermatitis for things like salt and sugar to irritate my eczema. So that's why my hands are always gloved up. And my old, as well as the fact that I am also a esthetician and nail technician. So I like to protect my nails when they're done. My point in mentioning that is it would be easier to bring it together without having to wear my gloves. The dough is in one piece and it's not crumbly or easily falling apart. So we're good. At this point, I don't need any more milk. Here I have a cutting board. I'm gonna flour this board. I'm gonna take about a small handful of flour and I'm gonna spread it out on the board. I'm gonna get my ball of dough and plop it out onto the board. I'm gonna take some of the flour and sprinkle it on top. And the reason I'm doing that is so I can have the ability to briefly fold it while also preparing to cut the biscuits when I'm done. First, you're gonna take your hand and flatten the dough just a little bit, like I'm doing. Over the next three minutes, I'm showing you the detailed process of seeing the dough start from being just a ball of dough to one cohesive biscuit dough that is suitable to cut your biscuits out of. How you achieve this is by simply folding the dough in a pattern of left, right, top, bottom. It doesn't matter if it's right, left. <laughs> As long as you're folding the dough in each direction and you complete that cycle of four steps about three to four times, your dough is going to be good. You don't want to overwork your dough or your biscuits are going to be tough. You're not kneading this dough like you would need a yeasted bread dough. You're gently kneading this. And again, just pay attention and see how at the end of the three minutes, the dough comes together and it's one piece instead of me having to make sure that the pieces stay together and they're not like falling apart or anything like that. Um, one thing you do wanna make sure of is to keep sprinkling the top of the dough very, very lightly with flour. 
during the process so your dough gets to that stage of being cuttable for your biscuits. You don't want to do it too many times, so honestly, three to four times is enough. This is enough. If you want your biscuits thin, then take your hand and flatten this out more so you can have, you know, thinner biscuits. If you want them big and fluffy, which is how I like mine, flatten it out just a little, but you should still have like a small rectangle. When you look at your dough, you should be able to see the pieces of butter, like how you can see all through here. That's what creates nice fluffy biscuits with layers that are soft and melt in your mouth. Now, after I bring my dough together, I let the dough rest for about three full minutes. You always wanna do that whenever you're making anything, whether it's yeasted bread or whatever. Give the ingredients time to just sit for a few minutes, no more than a few. Just gives better results than rushing it to go from this to this to this to this. Okay, so we've given our biscuit dough an opportunity. We just hang out for a few minutes. I have my cutter. I'm gonna rub the bottom of the cutter in a little bit of flour. When you cut out your biscuits, you wanna go straight down and come up. If you twist it, you're gonna seal the sides of the dough and you're not going to let your biscuits rise properly. That will result in a biscuit that is not light and fluffy. It will be dense and thick. We don't want that. So you just take it, go down. If it's stuck in here like that, just take your fingers and push it down gently. Can you see that? That's the start of the layers. I'm putting this in my greased cast iron skillet. Take the cutter, go down, lift up. Biscuits need to be baked at about 410 to 425. Hot and ready temps. And then when you have dough that's left over, pat it down again. Make another biscuit. That remaining milk, you wanna take a little brush and I can even find my pastry brush. So <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to do it by hand. So you take the milk, dip your fingers in it. You can just rub it on the top. This is gonna give you a little color on top. The milk solids. You don't use a lot, just a little bit. And then put this in the oven on 425. And I'll let you know exactly how long it takes. Okay, so here are the biscuits. They are looking beautiful. They are straight out of the oven. I'm just gonna take some butter and smother some on top. Okay, so I took butter and put them on the top. They look Beautiful. So let's just take a biscuit. Let's see, we'll do this one. The butter dripping. Those layers. This is very hot. <laughs> it 
<laughs> it's so hot. That's why it took me a second, cause, because it's so hot. But this is everything you want in a biscuit. You can accomplish this too. Just be sure to follow my instructions, very detailed. And thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video. Go ahead and have some of these biscuits with some old honey and butter and let me know how tasty they are. Do they remind you of your aunties or your grannies or anybody? Let me know. So to make my fried chicken biscuits, you can follow my fried chicken recipe in my playlist. I used some thighs here and I, it's piping hot. I don't know if you can see that steam, but, and I'm filming, trying to film with one hand. Taking my knife. Ooh, it's so hot. Ooh, that is so hot. I know y'all can see that steam. Putting it on here. Then I'm gonna take some Mike's Honey Hot, the regular. This is my son's. And I'm going to drizzle it on top. These chicken biscuits are so delicious. They are in our micro bakery and they're so filling and I encourage you to make them. Do them on a, you know, a Saturday or a Sunday when you have some time to yourself. Thank you for tuning in. Please be sure to like this video, subscribe, stick around. I wanna see you again. Take care.